Welcome back to Color Class. I'm Sarah. I'm Lucinda. And today we are looking at five signs you're wearing the wrong colors. We know what happens when we wear the wrong colors, but there are five sure ways that tell you that uh, this might not be right for you. Yeah. Can I start with the story? Yeah, of course. We had uh, someone write to us just the other day who showed me a picture of herself and she was in this red jumpsuit. And she said, this is not my season, but I had so many people compliment me on this and I, I'm confused. Mm -hmm. And I said, what exactly did they say? And they, and she said, well, they said that color looks really pretty on you. Ding, 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 ding. There's your sign. If somebody mentions the color of something that you're wearing, then Mm, it might not it be. It might not be your your best mm -hmm. look because what we want people to do is notice you, not the color. Mm -hmm. And so it, it when they say, Oh, that color is beautiful, it looks nice on you, they could be saying, That's a beautiful color on that hanger right over there in the store. Mm -hmm. it, they're complimenting the color. And what we want people to do is compliment you right so your color will need to act as a frame mm -hmm. or an enhancement for the work of art which is you so it was probably the color was standing out not so much that person was standing out exactly and that is a sign that we are going to talk about it is. It, later it's on in one of our numbers right in today but the first one that we wanted to talk about is that washed out appearance you get because i know it happens to me all of the time. And I know it happens to a lot of celebrities. We're going to be looking at J-Lo today just because J-Lo... Oh, it's so obvious. J-Lo is J-Lo. She's gorgeous. And even though she can look washed out, she can look like she might be tired in some colors. She can look like a color is wearing her. Some she's still beautiful. colors or... Have you noticed she has this deep abiding love of silver? Yes, the silver dresses. Constantly. Mm -hmm. And it makes me, you know, and it frustrates me so much because inevitably when she dons silver, which is all the time, right. far more than wearing bronze or gold, she gets this look, of this, um, I'm going to use a term here, a drawn appearance, uh, less than rested, less than healthy. Mm -hmm. And well, washed out appearance. That's exactly, exactly what happens. Like we know her skin tone is a golden, beautiful, healthy, rich, rich color. Right. But when she wears silver, what's going to happen? Her skin tone is going to pull to cool. So it's going to remove the warmth that's going to go gray. And we see that all the time because she likes to wear silver gowns. And we need Don't to talk to her it. about that. So do you know how to get in touch? <laughs> if you know how to get in touch with JLo, let us know. Just switch over to some warmer shades. You can still wear those like sparkly gowns. Just instead of silver, maybe go with like a Bronze. bronzier. Beautiful. Yes. And That's um, the dress. Just, this goes along with this mm -hmm. particular uh, sign. And it is that your complexion will take on an uneven appearance. If you're in the right, right color, you, you get this creamy kind of uniform looking complexion. Right. If you're in the wrong color, the parts of your complexion that the wrong color will draw out color, as Sarah described, and then you start to get this uneven look. Right. And mm -hmm. that's, that's part of this sign. Mm -hmm. if, it, if you look, if your skin tone looks uneven or if you look dull, dull or ashy yes. or pale, that, that's a sign. a sign. Yeah. You might be in the wrong color. Yes. Now we've done one. So number two, dark shadows. I am, I, I am the expert on dark, <laughs> dark shadows because I was born with them. They, they, <laughs> they I just have them naturally, uh -huh. but Boy, oh boy, when I'm in the wrong color, mm -hmm. it, it it just completely accentuates the fact that I, you know, hered from a hereditary perspective, right. I have these things anyway, and I'm constantly, you know, trying to battle them with concealer and whatever I need to use to, to disguise them. But there's no concealer in the world that is going to fix the dark mm -hmm. shadows that appear under your eyes because you're wearing the right or I'm sorry, because you're wearing the wrong 
color. Mm -hmm. That is unfixable mm -hmm. unless you put on the right color. Mm -hmm. And we've talked about this a lot in a, some of our videos, which is the color tries to find harmony, especially if you are somebody who is lighter and you're wearing a darker shade, that darker shade is gonna find harmony. And where is it gonna find harmony? In your shadows. The shadows, which means fine lines, wrinkles, under your eyes, wherever you cast something slightly darker, the color is finding harmony in the shadows. So you do have to be careful when wearing darker colors because we want to avoid that. I'm going to go off topic here just for a second. Mm -hmm. When I was in college, I worked in a frame shop. That was my, uh, right. I put myself through school that way. And um, so people, you go in to get something framed. You've got this work of art, this masterpiece. And the first thing that pe they do is they pull off um, all these different color mats they said, well, first, let's get a color for your mat right. or your the liner for your mat. What do you want to bring out in this picture? There's your clue. You know, it, and let's say it's a portrait because that makes it easy to think about. But mm -hmm. let's say it's a portrait of you. And somebody is saying, now, what color, what do we want to bring out? Do you want to bring out your eyes, the eyes in this portrait? You want to bring out the hair in this portrait? But inevitably... What they will do is they will look at the colors within your work of art. They will pick a matte color that is uh, that accentuates that, mm -hmm. and off you go. Rarely are you going to see a situation where you get something framed and a professional framer says, well, let's just use this color because it makes your shadows look deeper. <laughs> but there are colors that are going right. to make that happen. Mm -hmm. So that's... That's another sign. If, yeah. if you can't seem to get rid of those dark circles with uh, a good quality concealer, think about getting rid of that color. <laughs> Switching up the color just to help brighten it up. We, we just yes. aren't in the right palette yet. All right, next one. We are looking for overpowered by the color. Oh, that's a little bit like the story. I right. Told. I was yeah. going to say, that's what we talked about earlier. If a color is arriving before you, if somebody is noticing your color that you're wearing before yeah. they see you, if they make eye contact with your gown instead of your face, if they make eye contact with your lips. Yeah. Okay. There are instead certain, of you. certain situations where that can happen hasn't happened to me in about 35 years, but they might be looking <laughs> like at, Cinderella or something. Yeah. Or, but she still wears the soft blue. Or you might have some great body in a, in a gown and they might look at the gown, but here's, <laughs> here's the real clue. When they say, Oh, I love that color. Always. That is the sign that that is something you need to put in your Poshmark wardrobe or whatever and trade up for a color that, they say, you look amazing because right. that's what you want to hear. Mm -hmm. Now with J-Lo, I see her wearing the wrong lips. Well, okay. I don't see her wearing the wrong lipstick a lot, but we have found instances of her in a very bright. Remember, J-Lo is like this warm, soft. soft, deeper person. But when she wears something more like a spring color or anything outside of her palette, what is that going to do? It's going to throw it off and we're going to instantly look at the color that is not within her palette, especially yeah. for somebody who's deep and soft and warm. Usually those neon colors stand right out. So that's something, especially with JLo, that we see often. And then clashing with undertones. That's our number yeah. four. I mean, we've kind of hinted on this a little bit when we were talking um, kind of the uneven skin tone. Mm -hmm. We saw that a little bit. But now, especially with somebody who's a mixture of warm and cool, that can happen to me. Like today, I pulled my hair back to wear this purple color. So you kind of have to play with it a little bit. Well, what you've done today is you you built your outfit out of your soft, palette right not your four seasons palette and right. that's something that we do when we do color analysis for clients we we never do a four seasons color analysis never i would yeah i would say hardly ever we do a hybrid right that is always influenced by the dominant characteristic yeah i we do, we tend to really love the dominant characteristic and it's not <laughs> just the we love the four seasons too don't yes. get us wrong this is where but, it all came from but exactly it was the the basis the right. four seasons was uh 
Jonas Salk polio vaccine, you know, and it was saving lives. And okay, it was, all right, that was a little extreme, but follow me, follow, go with me here. It it was the beginning, and it was life changing <laughs> for many many people back in the eighties. It was the start when man discovered wheels, yeah, or or fire, <laughs> whatever. But the, but now we have jetliners, so we went from wheels to jetliners that still use wheels because the jetliner couldn't get off the ground without the wheel, the Four Seasons wheel. But we have so many more tools at our disposal that we can just take off into the air and fly to another city. Okay. We're, okay. I, I stayed with you. Right. It was getting good. <laughs> so, it, yeah, okay. Yeah. It, it fell flat. But the bottom line is, yes, we love the Four Seasons. Don't get us wrong. But there is so much more to it. Right. So many more tools that influence that Four Seasons for all of you out there. And I cannot tell you how many emails we get, how many uh, DMs we get, how many messages we get on our Patreon account saying, you know, it, it, when you guys did the, the, the show on soft, I felt like I'd found my answer that right. I've been searching and searching and searching and, or, or somebody, you know, said the same thing about clear. Right. When you do a hybrid, when you can incorporate the dominant characteristics into the palette that you may or may not fit into in the four seasons, you come up with a palette that is uniquely you and perfectly you. Great example. There is nothing in the four seasons that fits someone with very dark skin and very dark hair. Mm -hmm. Unless you put them in a winter, but that may not be their season. Right. You know, and, yeah. and Carol Jackson, I talk to Carol quite frequently. And the one thing that she, the point that she has made is when she wrote the book in the 1980s, the book was predominantly written for Northern women of Northern European descent. Mm -hmm. What does that leave out? It leaves out the whole world. Right. You know, it leaves out Asia. It leaves out Latin America. It leaves out Africa. It leaves le out me. <laughs> oh, uh, uh, us. us right yeah um, so yes there are going to be people that you can say oh yeah you you know you're in your season that mm -hmm. or maybe you were in your season in the 1980s and your hair has gone gray well, what do you do because now it's different right. so all of the tools and all of the developments and all the scientific work that has been done since the book popularized the four seasons concept it's all here for you right here at color class that's right. what we teach mm -hmm. and that's what we do when we do a color analysis mm -hmm. okay so we were on number four um oh we got off topic. and i don't even remember what number four was ah clashing clashing with undertones, undertones. <laughs> yes 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 well for example and here's another kind of slightly off topic but another piece of information that you might find interesting sarah she's uh -huh. a soft mm -hmm. and we were playing around with hair color you know and it, it, when she, she finishes up a summer her hair is kind of generally it goes lighter yeah i was gonna say blonder that's not the answer because you can see it's not blonder but it definitely goes it, it loses golden? some of its intensity right and the, um the richness because, it, because the spf queen here hasn't figured out a way to slather her head with spf so it gets lighter and so yeah. we were talking about what do we do to you know give her a color back for the fall and mm -hmm. and we were playing you know another part of our color analysis we have a, a a service where we put people in different digitally in different hair colors mm -hmm. and work with them on that and we discovered that a flat color on sarah doesn't really work and we were like what can, how can this be and then we also discovered that a balayage works amazingly mm -hmm. and balayage meaning highlights low lights uh, right right some dimension exactly mm -hmm. so what we looked at was her skin tone and her eye color because if you're talking about changing hair you got to take that out of the equation so right skin tone neutral she has a neutral skin tone yeah. Eye color, neutral. Mm -hmm. Her eye color is neutral. The only it, thing... It on depends on what I'm wearing that day. Does it go blue? Does it go green? Does it go gray? So it can go from cool to warm to neutral just based off what but I'm wearing. But all kind of around that neutral right. slider, right? Kind mm -hmm. of in the middle. Mm -hmm. We use sliders in our analysis. So right there kind of in the middle. And so it occurred to me that 
without her hair, she is completely soft because neutral equals soft. Mm -hmm. Neutral equals soft. I'll say that again, always. And so when you do the balayage or do highlights and lowlights, that makes her softer Mm -hmm. because it makes her color a little bit more ishy Mm -hmm. and it works better with her skin tone and her eye color than something that is a flat color, which works great on a clear. Clear. Mm -hmm. So if you are clear, getting those very sharp colors, those clear colors looks good on you. But if you're soft, having those dimensions, those ishier colors, the goldish with the reddish, the blondish, those colors create the dimension around the soft. So next time you're getting your hair done. Yeah. And that that can be, that's an answer to a question that we often get, you know, Mm -hmm. what's, what do I do with my hair color? Don't just look at the color, Mm -hmm. look at the treatment. You know, are we looking at highlights and lowlights or are we (laughs) looking at a be- just a beautiful color. Mm-hmm. It, it, many winners that I know try to highlight their hair because they're looking for something different. Mm-hmm. You know what I was just thinking? We should do a full video on my hair for fall time. Let's like, do it. We'll bring up the images of like the different colors. I'll show you what product I grabbed at Sally Beauty the other day. So we'll do a full video. Get your input, yeah. what you're thinking. We'll line up all the different gonna, images. I was going to volunteer to put on one of those hood things and pull your hair through that thing. And... I will not get on camera with that. <laughs> if there is one thing you will not see me, it is well, that. Well, actually, I thought you were going to say, you will not touch my hair, girl. <laughs> when they are done. No, I, what I got was like a temporary thing. I'll show you in our next video. It's yeah, temporary. Let's do it. so it's let's not... do it. Okay. If and, you guys want that, let me know in the comments. And, and, I, and I think though we should deal with clear you know, soft right. versus clear in mm-hmm. terms of the treatment because it's amazing. We're able to do right. this digitally so we can look at a lot of examples, but mm-hmm. changing color, like um, say, uh, remember Sharon Osbourne? She, Osbourne, she used to have the black the hair mm-hmm. and she went to the burgundy. But then somewhere along the line, she went, she did like some highlights and lowlights and a red looked awful then she went to white pure white looked amazing so So with cert with Mm -hmm. people who have clarity you can pull off solid color and me for example i i was sarah was saying yeah maybe you should look at something you know we were just playing around and i said absolutely not i tried it i looked like you know, uh, a WWF wrestler with the yellow hair. And no, I think that's World Wildlife Foundation. Oh, what is it when you're wrestling? WWE. That's it. Well, I look, <laughs> like, look like an I look animal. Like the WWF. <laughs> <laughs> I think even uh, and the WWE. But the bottom line is, black color without a lot of highlights right. and lights, It it's death on me. Yeah. So now that we've completely gone off topic, I don't even... Oh, we're, n- we're at number five. It's we're at the last fun. one. It's okay. fun. I love going off topic. Number five. What is number five? Feeling uncomfortable or just like putting oh. on an outfit mm-hmm. and, you know, it looked great in the dressing room where you had a certain or kind of lighting. I always feel like it looks good on somebody else that you saw, like... A, oh, yeah. Like, like someone you, online. You, you, or... you were looking through a catalog and mm-hmm. you saw somebody who's kind of had... You were like, oh, she's a redhead. I love that. Uh, I, I, that looked great on me. Mm-hmm. And then you get it home and, and you're like... Mm. Not right. Uh, uh-uh. Or the way your husband looks at you. Or... The, you know, I don't get that. My husband's perfect. Well, he er, everything she wears, he's like adoring. But you know, okay, <laughs> let me. That was and it was sexist. The way someone, anyone, looks at you, like it, it, sometimes you just think, oh, I don't know. Yeah. And luckily, I've got this. I'm her mother, and I've got this one who goes. <laughs> change your clothes it's <laughs> so, so no i will color. i will say wrong color different she we will. need to yeah switch it up yes so uh, lucky for me i don't ever have to worry about feeling uncomfortable or less confident because as soon as she sees me she goes you need to change that top and i will i it's a it, she it's great I I, i'm very fortunate I'm, right i'm not complaining I'm i don't very let her go out there it. looking crazy she will not well it, sometimes 
I, it, she when you leave the house it. without yeah. me yeah. seeing you, yeah. yes. yes. <laughs> I'm like, oh, girl. <laughs> but the, the point that I'm trying to make is if you don't feel quite right, that could be a sign mm -hmm. because yeah. you know. And the other, conversely, the other side of this coin, there's a positive side of this coin, is, and that is if you've got a top and you've worn it out three times and every single time or two out of the three times somebody said, you look great. That's all they need to say. Yes. that That's the key. That's the sign. That and when you hear that, you start making note of those colors. You start purchasing those colors. And then you start figuring out what season you are because it's automatic. It starts coming together. And you find yourself. If they say, I don't know if you know the statistic, but they say that, that you wear 20% of your wardrobe 80% of the time. Mm-hmm. Another way to look at that, though, is if you're wearing 20% of your wardrobe most of the time, that means 80% of your wardrobe is just sitting there purchased on the hanger, unworn. Right. So what makes you always go to that 20%? The color, the confidence, the feeling the, good. And the color and the confidence comes from maybe you put on a top and somebody goes, Oh, that looks great. Or in my case, right. Sarah lets me out the door and I'm like, oh yeah, this <laughs> must look great. Um, and so you build in your head kind of this, this little, uh, enclave of, right. of your favorites that you know are always going to look great on you. And if you have those go in your closet today, separate those out, just put the, you know, it, it, whether, you know, you do your closet by color or however you do your closet take that 20 percent that you that you go to mm -hmm. move them aside and then look at the the color palette they create Ooh, that's a good idea yeah because then can you do that on video with your closet by the way oh my gosh my whole closet no i have some black in there i have some but you, but you put you that's move those true, out yes. because i don't see you wear black i mean you may have some black I yeah. don't see you wear it. True. Yeah. Okay. I think that's a really good idea though. That would be what, fun video. What you wear a lot of, the colors you wear a lot of, put it off to the side and start seeing what palette that creates. That would be really interesting. And then you can sort of start, mm -hmm. stop wasting money on that 80% right. and start really focusing in and getting classics and, mm -hmm. and uh, your kind of go-to attire out of that 20% of the palette. Right. All right, so now that we have gone over our five rules, I barely remember what the original video was about because we have just gone. No, no I, we've it, been weaving in and out. <laughs> it, it was five ways to know it, whether you're in the wrong color. Yeah, well, what might happen? What might the appearance you feel? What's going on color wise? What are the ways signs? to tell? Yes, ways yes. to tell you might not be in the right colors. Yes. So, hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget. Hop on over to Patreon. Um, oh, did you see the, we did a poll of what colors I'm going to do next for my nails for the fall trends. And I think I am going to be getting cranberry nails based uh, off so everyone's pretty. response right Remember now. Remember the year that, I have I have a bone to pick with Pantone color of the year quite frequently because they'll come out with these colors. Like 90% of the time. Like, what? Peach fuzz? Eh whatever the year that they came out with baby pink and baby blue i was that like was, are you kidding me that was a bad year but one yeah. year they came out with masala yeah that was good and that was just beautiful yeah absolutely beautiful so i'm i'm anxious to mm -hmm. see your cranberry nails yeah so um if you are interested in joining us over on patreon we would love to have you we cannot believe the support that we are getting oh. It has been so much fun. Thank you again for all of our current members. We cannot thank you enough, we actually. We get such fun DMs from right. uh, over on Patreon where people mm -hmm. are just coming to us directly. And, and mm -hmm. it's it's very gratifying right. and fun for others. Mm -hmm. So also, if you want to follow us on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, also subscribe here on YouTube. It does help us out. Subscribing, liking, commenting, sharing, doing any of those things here on YouTube really pushes color analysis and our community that we are trying to grow with all of you amazing people. So thank you. And lastly, I'm Sarah. I'm Lucinda. This has been another color class and we'll see you in our next video.